and it was in 2015 when I started to work with Warner. It was really fun because I never had a proper job making collectibles. And they approached me and asked me how much you charge for this. I never knew how much to charge. So I was like, um, what about uh, $700? And they were like, really? <laughs> and I was thinking- You're listening to Art Heroes Podcast, the show to help you thrive as a digital artist. Tune in to learn how to transform your passion into a career. Get inspired by other kick-ass 2D and 3D artists and find out what it takes to be an art hero. Hi guys, this is Maria JD. Welcome to Art Heroes Podcast. Thanks for tuning back again this week and I'm super happy to introduce you guys to Soren Zaragoza. Soren is a really badass Mexican 3D artist. He works in between VFX and collectibles. And well, in today's podcast, I'm going to try to find out which industry he prefers and well, what he's up to. Meet Soren, guys. All right, Soren, we're now live. Thanks so much for coming to the Art Heroes podcast. Really appreciate you here. And guys... Uh, thanks for joining us. This is Soren Zaragoza, uh, live from uh, Mexico, right, Soren? Yes. Yeah. Yes, thanks for the invitation. <laughs> no, no, come on. Like, uh, uh, I was really excited when you said that you were you're, you're going to come because uh, that's uh, that's amazing, you know. Like, uh, but good things happen in 2020 uh, as well. Yeah, hello. So, uh, sorry, let's maybe then start from you. Um, I know, like, uh, there is. There's a bunch of good things that can be that can be sad, but uh, maybe just uh, update uh, on what you do now and uh, how do you actually normally introduce yourself, like as a 3D artist, as a sculptor, like how do you see yourself? Uh, well, uh, right now I'm working on collectibles and concept art for movies, 3D concept art. Uh, how I introduce myself, I don't know. It depends on the situation. It's going to be for for a movie. It's going to be more like I'm a concept designer. It's going to be for collectibles. I'm a 3D sculptor. So it depends. Okay. So you're really like now in between two industries, like movies and collectibles. Yeah, mostly. Sometimes okay. illustration for, for books too, but not so often. Jesus Christ, illustration for books as well. I thought that was like a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> um, um. So, okay. And uh, in terms of, uh, in terms of like, let's say, let's start with movies. So what kind of projects do you work with and how long have you been involved in the industry? Well, I started my career working for movies, making 2D art. It was for a Mexican studio, like seven years or eight years ago. And I was there just making backgrounds some simple concept art for props and things like that. A little bit later, I started to hang out with the guys from the 3D department. So I started to get involved with that kind of stuff. And like, I was there working for one year. Then I just quit because they were, were asking me for a lot of things, but they paid me like almost nothing. <laughs> so I started to look for something else. And a little bit later, I started to make a transition from 2D art to 3D art. And at the beginning, I was looking for work for um, to work as a concept artist, mostly uh, as a uh, concept designer in general, not in particular like creative designer or chart designer. A uh, little by little, I just started to explore a lot of things, and I started to realize that I really like to create creatures and characters, so I started to focus on that. But yes, I was looking for something that really captures me. Because I was lost, pregnant things and that. And I found it. It was something around uh, like five years ago, six years ago, when I started to make the transition to, from 2D art to 3D art. And that took me to working for a TV show in Spain. At the end, never made it to, 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 the, to the screens. But it was my first introduction to that kind of pro production. And I like it. So I started to push my work on that side. And little by little, I started to get involved with different companies. Also, at the same time, so random, but Disney contacted me to work uh, in the publishing department for, um, um, how to call it, like a 
small show for TV. Yeah. And it was so random because I was making ugly creatures, something horrendous, and, and suddenly Disney turned up my doors. So I was <laughs> like, I don't know, but I took it. So how do you think they even uh, got in touch with you? Not like got in touch physically, but like how did they get to know about you? Knowing that um, you're a different style even. Yeah, completely. Actually, I was so nervous about sharing my artwork because I was like, it's not good enough. But a lot of friends started to push me to start to share my work on social media. So I started to do it. And maybe what that was the thing that drove my work to some, some, somebody there. Wow. Okay. So do you think it's like in, in big amount, it's social media and the attention that you got? Yeah. For me, social media works pretty well. But okay. you, need to find, you need to find a way to turn how that works. Like uh, which you usual post your work this is something that I started to figure and like it was like five years ago it was okay if I post this work at this hour people in the United States just waking up checking their cell phones and my work's gonna be fresh there also it's gonna <laughs> happen the same in UK and I, if I post it's like 2 p.m. it's gonna be like some people in China just waking up and checking social medias so you need to think about it to make your work be use spread around. Interesting. So you actually now work social media as like professionally. So in terms of like, you know, you're, you're promoting yourself in this way, like and paying attention to these things nowadays. Yeah, I thought it on the call. I was just trying, trying, trying. Okay. So you didn't like go and learn about this. You just like tested. Yeah. Okay. I was just trying like for a whole year. And what's the main like, what's the main channel for you in this way? Like when you post your work, you mentioned, is it Instagram, ArtStation, or maybe mm -hmm. something else? ArtStation and Facebook art groups was the main thing. Since two months ago, I started to put more attention on my Instagram because it was just like random photos of food, traveling around, sometimes posting something you know, of art. But I increased the number of my followers by the double in one and a half. Just to start to post more art on my Instagram account. Okay, cool. Um, right. So let's just you know like take a step back. Um, like uh, I actually was wondering if uh, you are because we started we started saying that, uh, you worked as a two D artist. So what's your background yeah. even before two D and then three D art? Like, are you a traditional, do you come from traditional um, art background or it's like more of a random? And not at all, because I was uh, studying graphic design. But uh, the plan in the school was obsolete. So I started yeah. to figure out by myself. I was just trying random software. I have one cheap table. Um, was this brand genius? Cost me around um, 50 euros, something like that. It was really cheap. It was the first one. With I started to just looking on YouTube, hope I started to paint and was like, I want to do the same things. And little by little, so most of my development was as a sort of artist. Wow, okay. And uh, what did you learn first as like, like Photoshop or Illustrator? Yeah, it was Photoshop. Cool. And then like you pretty much got your first job um, like with uh, these skills. Yeah, it was, I was making ugly stuff that was enough for, for that studio here in Mexico. It was all to the art. But I learned uh, a lot in that year that I was working there. I went from making like one illustration per month and feeling okay with that to feel the need to have at least five illustrations per week. So that was cool. Wow, that is great. That is great. Yeah, it was. Um, so, um, sorry, and talk to me a little bit about your international career because I know that well, you're still based in Mexico and to me this is amazing how you've been working with all the best clients out there without ever working 
for a studio like in-house? I mean, that's true, right? Or you yes. work? Okay, yeah. So how did this even uh, happen? Like you just kind of jumped to uh, being like a remote outsourcing self-taught artist. So kind of, you know, like a dream destination for many. <laughs> Uh, uh, actually, I don't know how to explain it properly because it was just going and exp experiment and just do things on the go. Because, for example, it was in 2015 when I started to work with Warner. It was really fun because I never had a proper job making collectibles. And they approached me and asked me how much you charge for this. I never knew how much to charge. So I was like, um, what about uh, $700? And they were like, really? <laughs> and I was thinking that they were looking for, to don't worry my rates. And it was like, no. So they asked me like five times for two months. I never knew about them for the next two months. And so they approached me once again and asked me how much you charge for this? And it's get once again, $700. And they were, okay, let's do it. So I got my first commission and I did it and they gave me as a plus one thousand dollars. It was like how this works. <laughs> so I so I feel the need to ask somebody else who has a lot of experience in this field. And the guy is Eric Sosa, he's also from Mexico and he's a really well known sculptor artist. And he told me about his rates and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> And I was working almost nothing. So thanks to that, I started to realize that my work, um, is, uh, how, to, how to say it, sorry, sometimes still starting to translate my ideas from Spanish to English. Yeah, yeah, but, like I, I follow you. So that your work is worth a lot more. Yeah, exactly. So since then I started to, well, I contacted partners again. I told them, you know, and now I realized this. And if you want to work, you know, still working with me, uh, that's cool. If not, well, thanks for the opportunity. But they were okay with that. So little by little, we started to work in more projects. And I started to skyrocket my career. I was invited to give talks in Mexico. This year, we give to talks in Europe. And being in art festivals increased the chances for me to work with different companies, meeting people there. Because at the beginning, we just became friends because we shared the same passion, also sharing beers and talking about this and that. And that right to, hey dude, I know you as a person, I know your work, do you, do you want to work on this project? I was like, yes, why not? So that kind of thing started to drive my career to be involved in different uh, projects from different companies around the world. Uh, little by little, I started to work on with companies like Netflix and Bruce Studios for Lotter and Robots, and uh, working uh, as a concept designer and game frame artist for um, uh, Avengers Endgame and Avengers Infinity Wars, uh, things like that. Wow, that is impressive. <laughs> that is impressive. But I love the story of you charging $700. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure they were like, "This guy can't be serious." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably was that. Yeah. Um, so actually, and in this regards, um, so I wanted to see what you think now. So I think many young artists, specifically, uh, yes. don't know how much they should charge, and I, like. We get this question all the time, actually. Now, um, I just posted on Instagram that I'm having you on the podcast. And uh, um, and the first question that I got, and so like um, some Art Heroes folks are asking you a few questions. And so okay. the question already came up two times. How do I know how much I should charge? So I'm like beautifully asking you, how do they know mm -hmm. how much they should charge? And, you know, like you can't really compare yourself as an artist like you know objectively with other people mm -hmm. or can you i don't know what do you think about that i think that's necessary because we're working in a, in a field that is all about entertainment so we need to have something else to compare and thanks to that we, we will know okay this field is looking for this kind of work this kind of details this kind of level so I need to reach this level. 
And thanks to that, I will know where I am. And the next thing is uh, looking directly with uh, other people who's working there. As directly, sometimes people want to talk, want to talk about it. Sometimes they still keep it for themselves. And there's another tool that is Glassdoor, LinkedIn. You can check their like the common rates uh, compared with experience year, the years of experience, the kind of tasks that they have to solve in their daily schedules. So this amount of things will help you to know where you are and how much to charge. Also, something that I always recommend, it doesn't matter where you are. Like, for example, I'm living in Mexico and there are companies that are looking for me because they think this guy is going to be cheaper because he's from Mexico. I'm like, hell no, I'm doing this kind of work for this kind of productions. I know you're paying this amount of money for people living in UK, living in the United States. I'm looking for the same. Yeah. Because yeah. I can do the this same. Is fair. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this it is. is. Fair. So do you think there is something like, I don't know, standards for like junior artists for like entry level? Um, or it really depends on personal quality and there is nothing like junior or senior? Uh, I think it depends. Uh, this kind of tax helps to, to separate people like it's not black and white. We have like shades and that helps a lot uh, to the companies to know where to put the people. But once you, once you are inside of the company, it doesn't matter. You okay. do your work and show what you can do. And so you're going to jump from junior to senior to director. It depends on how you work, and how you, um, uh, how to say it, how you get involved with the company, with the people, yeah. how you communicate. Uh, at the end, how to work and make it easy for all the people. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. Like uh, communication is the key that actually frequently yeah, comes exactly. up. Yeah, that you just like really, it's like, it's important to have great skills. Yeah, but exactly. then also the, there is the the mm. communication. Yeah, but I agree, like Glassdoor, I think is a great tool and LinkedIn. So you can always see like the benchmarks of like different salaries. Uh, so um, like, when was the last time you updated your rates? Or now it's like really mm -hmm. not the thing. Uh, honestly. Honestly, I don't have like a established rate. It depends okay. on how much they're looking and the kind of the amount of work, but also how big is the uh, this is studio of the company or the project. Okay. So yeah, that's so so, so now it's like really flexible and it's really not about your personal rate, but more of like how much you can charge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is fair. I think so. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the industries because you mentioned that you're in between like collectibles and film. Mm -hmm. So which one do you prefer? Uh, I don't know how to tell it because I like both things. Sometimes, for example, the past two years, it was most uh, about collectibles and I love it. I really love it. But I was missing this part of creating something you know, for movies, seeing my ideas animated. So I was pushing for that. And gladly this year I had the chance to be involved in different movies. So I can choose one. I love to be switching from one field to another, another, another. Okay. So like, but if you, if you had to choose, like you can only stay in one industry, which one would you stick with? That's not fair. I, I love <laughs> a lot of things, but uh, pro probably collectibles. Okay. Okay. Well, all right. That there is no judgment. Uh, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. just, really, just wanted to put you in the situation. Um, okay. Cool. So, um, and what happens with your personal projects? And what's your approach towards personal projects? Like, do you work on something constantly, or it's like sometimes it depends on like on how busy you are? Well. I've been developing a personal project since the past three years. Uh, I want to take it to the big screen. I know it's going to take a lot of time. So I don't have like a proper script, something like that. I just throw ideas, uh, like a big scenario. I never dig de into details, not yet. But I want to take it, like I tell you, like, for, for the big screens. And I just started to make fun arts, 
most of the time, most of my career was like, I want to be known for my personal projects rather than just making fun arts. Because like, it's, it's like a cheating for me. But thanks to the trend, I started to make some fun arts and well, they were really well welcome. Exactly. Yeah, so, I know some of your some of your arts have been like uh, fan art projects have been received really well, but like really popular. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and thanks to the people. Yeah. So um, and uh, um, at at this point, uh, is it like one specific personal project that you're working on, or like do you rotate multiple? And when are you planning to publish? Is do you publish whips? Yeah, actually, yes, that's most what I do publish just whips. So remember the people that I just, uh, that I'm not the person that just share memes because in my social media it's all about that. So time to time I take a time to share my artwork, my personal artwork, to say, hey, I do art too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I realize on the Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, my, that personal break is the main thing, but sometimes I just want to throw random ideas, something that is not related to that. But I just want to take it out of my mind. So sometimes I just take a time to make something random just to refresh my mind, creating different stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, is there something that you're learning these days, like for yourself and for, you know, professionally, any like new tool or something? Do you think there is something like uh, the next big thing? Mm -hmm. I'm about to tell right now in my schedule, I already have a uh, learning properly XGN to make a food and room. And once I handle that, I want to switch most of my time to learn in real because it's the next thing. Okay. In real gym. Yeah. And I think that's all. Well, that's already quite, quite enough to yeah. keep you busy, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, that's cool. That's, that's really cool. And, um, what is uh, your uh, take that now we're just taking a step aside from you know all things all things like your art um, like since 2020 is more of like working from home and there's no uh, like no activity happening outside has this changed your life um, a little bit? Mm, yeah, a lot because a lot of people know me as a freelancer living in my house and it's like. It was always the same for you, right? But now, because I love it to travel so often, I used to spend like three to four months of my year outside of Mexico traveling, and no, I don't have the chance. Also related to, the, to this field, at the beginning of the year, I had the chance to work with a two Oscar winner art director and two Oscar winner director, and I was amazed by that. But thanks to the pandemic, is I was working, I don't, can't tell much about it because NDAs, yeah. But it was a live action movie and they had to stop. So oh, I lost no. the chance to working on that. Uh, that was like the most not cool thing. Yeah. But uh, after that, I started to receive a lot of job offers that are completely related to CGI, that they don't need like a proper set to, to record. Yeah. Yes, um, it's been a cool year talking about work. Yeah. But I was planning with my girl to travel to Japan and we had to forget about it. Oh, you too. Like same here. We actually oh, had tickets. So sorry. We had tickets to Japan booked and uh, luckily managed mm. to <laughs> get yeah. this back, but I was supposed to be yeah. in Japan as well. Yeah, I know. This is this is painful. Um and uh what about festivals? Did you attend many this year as of like online? And do you think like online events? actually do the job or it's not the same? Uh, I feel bad about them because they're making a big effort to, to make it feel like a being winter properly. But it's not the same. It's not the same vibe. You don't have the chance to talk with random people. You have like, for example, the rooms in Discord to talk directly or telling groups. But it's not the same. It's not like just going for for a drink and meet someone. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So it's not the same. I just, I was invited to give talks and I was like, I don't feel the same vibe, sorry. So I just take one uh, if, if I'm not wrong. Uh, and as a attendee, I just went like 
to two to three talks in different online festivals. And I thank them for making this effort, but I don't feel the same vibe as winter. Yeah, I know. Um, and it's hard. It's hard, actually. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's hard for both sides, I think, because as an mm -hmm. S&G, you actually want to uh, participate in, as an organizer, I guess. It's even yeah. harder to make everybody happy. Um, so, yeah. But hopefully that changes. And then, yeah, uh, I hope so. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, uh, we've got another. Uh, we've got another question. Let me just uh, check with the uh, with the audience what people are. Um, okay, yeah, somebody's. Well, somebody's saying that you rock and you're missed so much to nowhere. But I guess you're just missed in general. <laughs> and and somebody else um, is uh, asking um, if uh, uh, if you're planning to teach in a class somewhere so let's talk about that yeah uh, i don't know yet actually i need to make some calls tomorrow to favor that one is with a russian company is aircraft another one is with jihu from china yeah so i don't have like a proper offer yet we're going to talk about it so that's the main thing about teaching something and uh, the things that i do okay cool uh all right so soren and finally um like why are you actually soren so i had to ask this i actually wanted to ask in the beginning and yeah. this is Gilberto. Um, like i think your art station even says that but like yeah. oh how come how where where soren came from uh it's kind of embarrassing no <laughs> <laughs> yes it is because the first time that I had the chance to draw something in a digital um, medium was in a palm tablet, monochromatic. And I was just making a joke about these car designer cheap foods. And I was making uh, inappropriate jokes about his name. And I started to make digital, run and digital, digital art, and seeing my work as something stupid. And so to realize that my work started to approach more people, I was, I need to change this. But at the same time, I was like this kind of dark guy. Okay. In, both, uh, <laughs> in nihilistic li literature. And I went, uh, I met this, the books of this guy, Soren Kierkegaard. Okay. So I just take it from him. Okay. And I started to use it. Yes, oh my uh, also, at the beginning, it was my nickname for video games, not properly for art. It was like my nickname video games, and I just took it from the video games to my artwork. Uh, one thing just dropped another, 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 and a lot of people started to know me as Soren. Well, that's it. Cool. Oh, my yeah. God. I thought it would be way more embarrassing than that when you <laughs> said that. No, it's actually not too bad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, and actually, all the dark thing, like, like, how come you just like you like all this darkness i mean uh like half of your i'm more probably not half but definitely definitely some percentage of your art station is mature content <laughs> so i actually think that more more of your art station should be marked as mature content but <laughs> <laughs> probably all of this but uh uh yeah so where this all comes from i just like mm. you just like really like dark guy Never smile. Uh, <laughs> nah, no. Nah. I'm just a child guy. I love this kind of stuff, but I I also had the chance to work in things like our cartoon sliced. And sometimes people don't don't see me making th this kind of art. So I really love these kind of dark themes. I'm a huge follower of Guillermo del Toro. Okay. So also Cliff Bakers. A lot of um, dark team work. So I just love to explore these kind of scenarios, like maybe there's some way to open a portal and go to these kind of places. Then it's not just inside of my dreams, things like that. Like there's a chance, there's a way to get her. And I just want, I just love to uh, lose my mind think of, thinking about it. 
Wow. Okay. It's uh, you know it's uh, uh, some of your some of your artwork is just really I think deep and there's like this connection with uh, the outer world and the death and uh, just like really dark ideas. So there definitely must be some inspiration for this. I don't know. I don't know. Just guessing. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people that inspires me. Okay. Okay, um, Soren, we've got a little tradition here at the podcast. So we've got uh, like 10 questions that I ask everybody. So okay. um, you are allowed to use, to answer with like one sentence or a few words, something like this. Um, and uh, I'm ready when you are. Oh, okay, it's going to be hard because, like I was telling you, I struggle to translate my ideas from one language to another. No, no, you're good, huh? Okay, I'll help you to translate. They're short questions, huh? I'm sure you're going to be good. Yeah? Let's okay, go. let's do it. Let's do it. So, um, what's your number one tip for combating distractions when working from home? Mm, stick to a scale. Once again? A stick to a schedule. Ah, okay, yes. Okay. Uh, what's your favorite tradition or holiday? Mm -hmm. I think it's Halloween. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what's your favorite way to get in some exercise? Mm, I love lifting weight. I just started yesterday because this whole pandemic I just was making nothing great uh, what's your what's your most used emoji mm, I think it's a smile a smiley good um, what's your source of inspiration mm, it's gonna be like a cliche with the whole world that's not really cliche okay <laughs> <laughs> like uh, if you said Pinterest that would be cliche <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> um, what's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Do what you love. Wow, that is deep. Um, how do you celebrate little victories? Mm, lately, going, well, not lately because of the pandemic, but before the pandemic was just going to the cinema with my girlfriend and spending time together. And after the pandemic? And during the pandemic? Netflix. <laughs> okay. Um, how do you... Okay, that we've covered. Uh, if you could see one movie again for the first time, uh, what movie would that be? It doesn't have to be Netflix, by the way. <laughs> uh, definitely Jurassic Park, because thanks to Jurassic Park, everything started for me. The first movie. Wow. Okay. Great. Um, and uh, if you could have two people, uh, any two famous people for dinner, who would you invite? Carl mm, Sagan and Beksinski. Okay, interesting. And final question, what's your backup career? Mm, I don't like it, but I'm good at graphic design. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you also hate people that don't understand the difference in between 3D art and graphic design? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, probably everybody has like uh, some yeah. like, uh, like uh, neighbors or grandmas or... <laughs> yeah, it happens so often. <laughs> yeah, or annoying relatives <laughs> that still think that we're designing logos. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, that's okay. We'll forgive them all. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Soren, thanks so much for coming on the show. Really appreciate having you and, uh, you know, good luck with everything. And um, I would like to catch up back again in some time and see how everything is going. Um, and, yeah. you know, like, I actually wish you were back with your Oscar winning film directors. I mean, thank you. I mean, I really wish that, you know, folds really in peace for you back mm -hmm. again after. Yeah, I hope so. Fixes. Yeah, I hope so, because it was like the biggest thing that happened to me as a professional, and suddenly everything went, went down. So I just gonna keep pushing for that. 
it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Sometime. That's yeah. going to happen. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, all right, Soren, have a great day. Thanks again for coming and cheers. Thank you, Maria. All righty, guys, that's it for today. Thanks so much for listening all the way until the end. If you have any questions to Soren or if you want to connect with him, please go ahead, post us something under the video. Any, any reactions are really appreciated. All your likes definitely count. And if you don't want to miss the next episode, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. But uh, besides that, don't forget to activate notifications. YouTube is getting weird and there is this little icon with the bell. So if you activate that, you'll get a notification when we've got the next episode. Normally it happens on Fridays. So stay tuned. We'd love to see you coming back to listen to our Heroes podcast back again. And well, keep rocking. Cheers. Thanks for listening to Art Heroes podcast. Check out www.artheroes.co for show notes, more interviews, and free tools made for you by our team of mentors. Tune in next week for more inspiration and keep up the great work, hero. Mm-hmm.